I'm going to show images of diffuse and anaplastic astrocytoma that have been renamed astrocytoma IDH mutant, respectively grade 2 and grade 3, as you can see in this rather impressive overview of the changes from the 2016 to 2021 classification. And diffuse astrocytomas differ from the previously discussed parasitic astrocytoma, which was really expensile, in that diffuse astrocytomas grow infiltrative and have little mass effect. And 10 to 15 years ago, if I would see a lesion like this with little mass effect and no enhancement, I would put low-grade or diffuse astrocytoma on top of my differential diagnosis. If the lesion would be infiltrative with little mass effect and enhancing, I would prefer an anaplastic or high-grade astrocytoma. And in case of necrosis, I would suggest GBM that we will discuss in the next vlog. And by calling enhancing lesions high-grade astrocytomas and non-enhancing lesions low-grade astrocytomas, we were correct in the majority of cases. But occasionally there was a lesion, for example a case like this, with a lesion in the right precentral area without enhancement that turned out to be a high-grade astrocytoma on histology. And until 2016 the classification was based solely on histology. And grade 2 astrocytomas were characterized by an increase in cellularity without a lot of mitosis and without neovasculature. Grade 3 astrocytomas were characterized by a marked increase in cellularity with mitosis, nuclear atypia and anaplasia of the cells, hence the alternative name anaplastic astrocytoma. And there were also terms for how the tumor looked on histology, such as fibrillary, protoplasmic or chemistocytic astrocytoma. And they have all been abandoned in 2016. So, in the late 19th, beginning of the millennium, the search started for the underlying genetic mutations in tumors. And one of the largest studies that had been published was a study from Switzerland, where they looked at 715 glioblastomas and their gene mutations. And there was this scheme where you can see that low-grade astrocytomas progress to anaplastic astrocytomas and progress to secondary glioblastomas. And you could also have a primary glioblastoma. And as mentioned before, going from grade 2 to grade 3, there is more mitosis, more vessels needed, more enhancement. And this is a continuum, a spectrum, with arbitrary limits. In 2008, there was a very clever article in Science where they looked at the entire genome of the glioblastoma. And what they did was that they looked at over 20,000 genes in 22 tumor samples, and they called this the discovery screen. And after this discovery screen, they established 21 genes and they looked at these 21 genes in an additional 83 GBM samples. And they found a gene that wasn't on the previous slide, and that was IDH1. And the mutation in these IDH genes was a very important prognostic factor, because the median survival of a GBM with an IDH mutation was 3.8 years, whereas the median survival of IDH wild type was 1.1 years. So 
there was a lot of interest in IDH1. And in the previous slide, there were two authors, Vogelstein and Kinsler. And those are the two doctors that have come up with the colon carcinoma model in the 90s, where you have normal colonic epithelium with a mutation in a gene leading to a small adenoma, another mutation leading to a large adenoma, and then a final mutation leading to a carcinoma. So the question was if this IDH mutation was an early or a late mutation. So the same group also looked at gliomas and the prevalence of the IDH mutation, and they found that the IDH mutation was also very frequent in low-grade to diffuse astrocytomas and oligodendrogliomas. So it's an early mutation, and it's also a predictor of the prognosis in anaplastic astrocytoma, so not only in glioblastoma. And this IDH, it's not a typical oncogene or an oncosuppressor gene. There's a lot we don't know, but I'm going to mention a few things about this IDH because it is so important and emphasized in the classification of the astrocytomas. If there's a mutation in IDH, which is a gene that is involved in a protein that is involved in the energy metabolism of the cell, and it occurs in the mitochondria and in the cytosol. And if there's a mutation, it gets another function. So normal IDH does the conversion of isocitrate to ketoglutarate, whereas if it's mutated, it converts ketoglutarate into hydroxyglutarate, and this is called neomorphic enzyme activity. And this 2-hydroxyglutarate influences the methylation of the DNA, so it impairs the DNA mechanisms, so the cell is more vulnerable for DNA damage. Another thing is that when converting ketoglutarate to hydroxyglutarate, there is the formation of NADP+, which leads to more reactive oxygen species. This damages DNA lipids and proteins, which is not good if you also have impaired DNA repair mechanisms. If you do specialized spectroscopy, you could demonstrate 2-hydroxyglutarate in the tumor, but because you have to use specialized spectroscopy, it's not very widespread. And the final thing about IDH that we are going to discuss now is that because there's glutarate conversion to hydroxyglutarate, there's glutarate must ketoglutarate missing in the Krebs cycle, so instead the cell starts to use glutamine, which dis disturbs the metabolism. Because IDH mutation is such an important prognostic factor, it would be nice to have imaging features that are predictive of an IDH mutation, and there is one, and that's the T2 flare mismatch shine, which occurs in about 50% of IDH mutant astrocytomas, which means that there's high signal on the T2, low on flare, but there's not a large cyst. And this suppression on the flare is caused by the microcysts in the astrocytoma. And this is what was previously called the fibrillary astrocytoma, so the fibrillary pattern. So you have all this astrocytes and the processes of the astrocytes form this network, this fibrillary pattern, and this fibrillary pattern is filled with microcysts. The microcysts are filled with mucinous fluid, and the mucinous fluid um, has another T1 signal, which leads to the T2 flare mismatch. And you can also use the T2 flare mismatch in the glioblastomas. And the scheme I've shown before, the right side is the IDH mutant astrocytoma. So the secondary glioblastoma has been renamed astrocytoma ADH mutant grade 4. And we're going to talk about this one in combination with the glioblastoma next time. Thanks.